work with people who many of you stereotypically loathe. They're alcoholics, they're boozers, and they're drunks. They're addicts, they're pill poppers, and they're junkies. You see, I've always wanted to understand why people do what they do. Because I believe if I can figure out the why, then I can find ways to help them. Help them find a better life and heal. So I worked as a clinician for probably about 15 years, and I watched as drugs and alcohol destroyed people's lives. So I made the decision to go back to school, and I got my PhD. Because I thought maybe through research I could find some of the answers to the questions that I couldn't answer as a clinician. And what's really exciting is that I'm finding some of those answers, and I'm going to share some of those answers with you here tonight. You see, when I was a clinician, I watched so many people who wanted to get sober work really hard to try and get sober, but they just couldn't. And in, again, it wasn't because they didn't want to, but it was because things just got in their way. So let me tell you a little bit about Anna. When I met Anna, she was trying to get clean from meth. She'd probably been in treatment maybe five or six times, and she'd burned all of her bridges. But she told me she wanted to get clean, and so we found her a program where she could go. And this particular program, it was going to be a little bit tough for Anna because, well, it was a no-smoking program, and Anna smoked cigarettes in addition to the meth. And she was there for maybe a couple hours before she lit up. There were no second chances. They kicked her out. They actually drove her down the road to the 7-Eleven and dropped her off. She had no money and no phone. And really, her only opportunity right at that moment, her only choice, was to hitchhike back to the meth house. And that's what she did. I heard from Anna a couple weeks later, and she wanted to try again. But this time, in order for her to get into treatment, she was going to have to go through a detox program. She went to three detox programs before she actually found one that would take her. The first one she went to, it was a medical detox. And well, if you're not going to die, they don't want to admit you to the program. If there's no risk, why bother? And when you come off meth, it really hurts. But you don't die. The second program she went to was cash only. She had no money. You can't pay, you can't stay. But she found this third program, and they finally, finally admitted her. Ten hours after she was admitted to the program, my cell phone rang. It was four o'clock in the morning. The nurse on the other line told me that she was done. She'd completed her detox treatment, and now they wanted me to come and get her. <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning. But you see, if I didn't come and get her, they also said they were going to make her just leave. And I knew where she was going to end up. So I went and I got her. And this is where things actually got really hard, because now she's on a wait list for treatment. And we didn't know if it was going to take a day, a week, or a month for her to get in. And she had no idea what to do next. Anna's not alone. In America today, there's 23 million people struggling with addiction. And of those, 10% are able to get treatment. And of the people who get treatment, 40 to 60% of them relapse within the first year. So after a year, only about half of the people are still sober. And the question remains, even if they've gotten treatment, what do they do when they get home? What's next? And what about that 90% of people who don't get treatment at all? What are they supposed to do? You see, chances are their cell phones are filled with phone numbers of people who they drank and they used with. They can't go back to the bars and the parties. And they really just don't know what to do because they've burned all their bridges. So think about it for a moment. If you're one of these people, what would you do? Can you even imagine what tomorrow might be like? Well, about 10 years ago, I was climbing at, the, the, at a rock gym in Boston, Massachusetts, and I met this guy named Scott Strode. And we became friends and climbing partners. <laughs> I'm Scott. And um, 
He told me he was in recovery, but I didn't really think anything of it because the truth is, is we were climbing and we were having so much fun. And there was this one New Year's Eve weekend where we got a whole group of people together and we went ice climbing. And again, knock it out of the park. We had so much fun. A few weeks after that holiday weekend, Scott told me that it was the first time that a holiday had come and gone and he hadn't thought about drinking. And he shared with me this idea he had for doing things different. He wanted to take what he had learned from his personal experience in recovery and give it to other people. And me, I thought it was a no-brainer. You see, Scott got sober after years of binge drinking and a lot of cocaine. And lucky for him, he wandered into a boxing gym, and then mountaineering, and then triathlon. And with every mountain he climbed, and with every finish line he crossed, his recovery grew stronger. But what he struggled with was the stigma and the shame. And telling people he was in recovery was really hard, and he often felt alone. When I met Scott, it changed my life because I realized something from spending time with him, and that was that people are not their disease. So not long after this great weekend, Scott was very inspired and he decided he wanted to make this happen. So he moved here to Boulder, Colorado, and he started a program called Phoenix Multisport, and he asked me to help him. So we created this program where addicts were no longer defined by their addiction. Instead, shoulder to shoulder, they climbed mountains and they inspired others. And in 2006, Phoenix Multisport was born. Phoenix Multisport is a sober, active community for people who are in recovery from drugs and alcohol, and it gets them involved in an active lifestyle. And through things such as climbing and hiking and running and cycling and strength training, people are finding the strength and the support they need to recover. In Colorado, right now, in the front range, Phoenix has served over 8,000 people. And in case anybody's wondering, we have goals of taking over the world. Yeah. Our instructors facilitate probably 55 events a week, which is really amazing because what it means is that every day of the week, there's something for people to do and there's some way for them to connect. They don't have to be alone. The other thing that's really unique about Phoenix Multisport is that all of our instructors are what we call peer professionals, which means they're in recovery themselves because we believe that they're in this unique position of knowing what really works and what doesn't and what matters most. And they can also connect people into a broader sober community that as a clinician, I just could never do. It's pretty amazing. The other thing, people ask me all the time, if we're just replacing one addiction for another, you know, the alcohol and the drugs, we're replacing that with running and climbing. The answer is no. You know, the sport brings people together, but it's the experiences people have, it's the fun and the people that keep them coming back and help them heal. A lot of our members wear t-shirts that say Phoenix Multisport or it says sober across the chest. You see, it's really hard to be tied to stigma and shame when so many people around you are proud of who they are and they're open about their recovery. And you remember in the beginning, I told you about that 23 million people who were struggling with addiction, and half of the people who went to treatment actually were able to stay sober. At Phoenix, three quarters of the people who come to our programming stay sober. And what's also really amazing is that when we asked people who relapsed if they would come back, over 90% of them said yes. And that they would come back without any feelings of shame or guilt or worry. And that's huge because addiction is a chronic relapsing condition. And if we can get people to come back, at least we can minimize the damage that has been done and get them back on track and moving forward. So we call that a huge win. We also believe that recovery is more than sobriety alone. And uh, our participants tell us that by participating in Phoenix, 
they actually are seeing benefits to their physical health, their mental health, and their quality of life. So while I've been a part of Phoenix Multisport, I've learned three really important things about recovery. And the first one is people matter. Going it alone by yourself in recovery is really hard. But when you do it together, it just makes it all that much easier. Second, fun matters. Because if you're not having fun today and you don't see joy, you have no hope for tomorrow. And that brings me to my third point. Tomorrow matters. If we can imagine a better tomorrow and we have hope for our future and we see a bright tomorrow, it makes dealing with the crap we have to deal with today a lot easier. Together, these three things are creating a tipping point where living sober is just a little bit easier. It's a little more accessible. It's valued. And before I leave here tonight, I'm going to leave you with one last thing because I think this is really important for recovery or beyond. And that is that people are not their disease. It doesn't matter if they struggle with addiction, diabetes, depression, cancer. It's a piece of who they are. That's it. And when we tell somebody who's struggling with addiction that they're an addict or a junkie, what we're telling them is they are their disease. What I want you to think about is that they're actually the person who's sitting next to you. It's your mother, and it's your brother, and it's your sister. It's your cousin, it's your best friend, it's you. They're also teachers and mentors. They're engineers, they're doctors, they're lawyers. They're even presidents. So you remember Anna? While she waited to get into that treatment program, she came to Phoenix Multisport every day. I had lunch with Anna a couple weeks ago. She's been sober for five years. Anna was and always will be more than her disease. And the people that I work with at Phoenix Multisport you might not agree, but I got to tell you, they're not just alcoholics and drunks and boozers, addicts and dope fiends. There's so much more. Thank you. <laughs>